How to Pray the Names of God. Hi, I'm Kevin Jackson. I am the originator of the website OrdinaryTheologian.org. I'm also the pastor of Grace Baptist Church in Grenada, Mississippi. And I'm the author of the best-selling book, The Prayer of Jesus. And in that book, The Prayer of Jesus, which, by the way, if you want a free copy, go over to my website, get a copy absolutely free. I teach the reader how to build their prayer life one step at a time. And one of those steps that I distilled in that book is how to pray the names of God. And so praying the names of God is very important for the Christian, I believe, because Jesus said, hallowed be thy name. So if the name is important enough for Jesus to mention in that model prayer, then it's important enough for me and for you to pray on a regular basis. Now, what we're doing in these videos, how to pray the names of God, is I'm giving you the name, and then I'm giving you the verses which tell you what the name means, and then we're giving some applications for you to actually take into your prayer life and, uh, and appropriate. All right? So three verses here I want to call your attention to. The first one is uh, Psalm 124. Our help is in the name of the Lord. All right? That's where our help is. So we need to know the name. If that's where our help is, we need to know the name. Know the name, you know where your help is. All right, uh, Psalm chapter 20 says, some trust in chariots, others trust in horses, but we will trust in the name. It's very hard to trust in something if you don't know what it is. All right, so that's the reason that we're doing this video is so that you can know what the names of God are. And then uh, Proverbs 18 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to his name and we are safe. Now, today we're looking at a compound name. All right, uh, this is uh, the divine name, as you know, we either say Adonai or Jehovah. For our purposes, we have been saying Jehovah. Jehovah. All right. And then we're looking at this next word. And this, this is a great, great name. It's a great name for many reasons. Now, if I were to say to you, uh, hello, how are you doing? Obviously, we just walked into each other. If I'm leaving you, I'll say bye, see you later. Right? Okay. If you were Hebrew... Uh, when you met somebody, you would say, Shalom. When you leave their presence, you would say, Shalom. So it's a way for you to greet somebody, someone and a way for you to walk away from someone. And this word Shalom means, all right, Shalom, it means peace. All right? So what this means is the Lord, our peace. How many of you need peace? Think about it. You got, a, you got a phone, you got Twitter, you got Snapchat, you got Facebook, you got a job, you got kids, you got a spouse, you got co-workers, you just, just, it's busy. You need peace. This name here, Jehovah Shalom, is your point of reference for that peace. Because this name reminds us where peace comes from. Peace doesn't come from a vacation, and I love vacations. Peace doesn't come from reading a book, and I love reading books. Peace comes from a source, and that source is Jehovah Shalom. Our peace is our peace. Now, these two passages here, one of them is in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Judges, as you know, is the seventh book in your Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Judges. All right, Judges chapter 6, verse 22 through 24, this is what it says. Then Gideon, remember Gideon, perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, shalom, be to you. Do not fear, you shall not die. And then verse 24 is important. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord of Peace. He called it Jehovah Shalom. All right, so that verse 24 there is the important verse. Jehovah Shalom. It is the Lord peace. Now, in Numbers, just a few books back, you have what's called the uh, ironic blessing. Not the ironic. <laughs> uh, that may be my southern draw. Uh, but it's the ironic uh, priesthood. And it's a blessing that Aaron gives to the people. And this is what it says. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons and say, Thus you shall bless the people and say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Listen to this. So they shall put my name upon the people and I will bless them. Do you see that? So what does he say? He says, peace be upon you. And the Lord says, by doing that blessing, you're putting my name on them. You're putting the name Jehovah Shalom on those people. Now, when it comes to application, there are two things. When we talk about peace uh, that I want us to see, there is objective peace. Our objective peace. And this, I'll draw it over here. Objective peace is Romans 5 1. And really, you'll never have subjective, and that's really the second one, subjective peace. You'll never have subjective, experiential peace unless you've got the objective. Now, Romans 5 1 says, Now that I've been justified by God in Christ, I have peace with God. So peace comes from the source. It comes from Jehovah Shalom. And that peace is Christ Jesus. Christ justifies us, forgives us for, of our sin, counts us righteous with His very unrighteousness given to us, and, and makes us His children, makes us children of the Father. And so that's that objective peace. Now, without that peace, you'll never have subjective peace. You'll never have peace in your daily life. Until you know the Prince of Peace, there'll be no uh, practical peace. All right, so this is, this is Romans 12. It says, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with each other. And not only that one, but you've got another one there. Philippians 4, Philippians 4, uh, verse number 7. And uh, Philippians 4, verse 7 says, Don't be anxious by anything, but by prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. And the peace, the shalom, the peace of God which transcends human understanding. The source of peace is Him. He transcends human understanding. That peace will guard your heart and your mind. Your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So your experiential peace comes from that objective peace of being justified in Christ. Okay? So you got this? Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. May God make His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you. May He keep you. And may He give you His peace as you pray the name Jehovah Shalom.